Welcome to Fine Art Diary. Today we'll see a simple way to paint this landscape. So let's jump into the painting. For this painting, I'm going to use this 14 by 20 10 ounce canvas board. Now let's start with a very quick color sketch. Here I'm using ultramarine blue, viridian, crimson and a touch of yellow ochre. So let's get started. This layer is like a sketch. I am only thinking about the composition. I am placing all my elements. So from this layer only I will come to know how the final painting is going to look like. Everything is an abstract form. I am not trying to paint something in this layer but just putting some abstract shapes according to the composition. You can see I have planned the background and the middle ground. Now it's time to plan out the foreground and for that Let's give the suggestion of a big tree in the foreground. So whatever I am doing over here, these are all suggestions. And now let's start painting the sky. And for that I am mixing ultramarine blue and white. In this case I am painting how much sky is visible. And let's add a little bit crimson to it to add a little bit variation to the sky. It need not to be very precise, I am just blocking the sky and after this all the elements will come over this paint. So we don't have to be too precise. Now over the wet paint, I am taking titanium white and giving the hints of the clouds. In this particular painting, I don't want to make the sky too complicated. I'll try to keep it very simple. And that is the reason I am keeping very less contrast in the sky. Now I will start blocking individual objects for the painting. I'll start with a hut and for this I am mixing crimson, yellow, titanium white and a touch of ultramarine blue. First I will start blocking the roofs and then I will paint the walls. This is the time to analyze the sun direction. This painting is of an overcast day so there is no direct sunlight in this painting. Whatever the shadow will get that will be the form shadow and the occlusion shadow. So I will focus on these two areas. This is the time to create the walls. I'll keep it very dark because the occlusion shadow from the roof will be on the walls but I'll try to keep some variations in the walls. Now I am adding the darkest dark to create some depth and form.
because the direct sunlight is not there in the painting everything is appearing too dull and this is the reason i am creating different different hues of grays and trying to create variation in this painting You can see step by step I am adding more elements on the top of the previous layer. For very small areas also, I am giving variation of values and also variation of hues and that is very important to make the painting harmonious. Once again, making the sky a little bit brighter. This side also giving the hints of another house. This is the blocking which is very important. Your blocking actually creates the composition of your painting so if your blocking is correct there is 80% possibility that you will have a successful painting all right for now i am keeping it like this and let's move on to block in the background trees and at the very beginning let's create the darkest dark the trees i am going to paint in three different layers the dark layer the mid tones and the highlights so i am going to paint all my trees in this concept over here i am blocking my shadows that means the dark layer In shadows also you can see I am creating variation of greens and blues which will create the painting very harmonious. In this stage we have to be very spontaneous. I am not painting anything too precise and I am not thinking too much about individual leaves or individual branches. I am thinking the tree's overall shape. I'm done with the shadows now let's come to the mid tones and it has to be more chromatic than the shadow the trees will get its green color from the mid tone itself we should not cover the entire shadow part with the mid tone we have to remember to leave some shadow area to create depth You can see how the tree shape is coming forward and making it a little bit brighter to create the sense of the depth. All right, that is looking fine. Now let's add some branches to it.
for this tree also i am doing the same but you have noticed i have made it a little bit more blue than green because it is a background tree now i will mix the color for the highlight and it has to be much more brighter than the mid tone and here and there i will just touch the highlight color i should not cover the entire mid tone so here and there i am giving the touch of the highlight this is all right now let's bring back some of the sky shapes through the trees here and there All right now let's give the hints of some small plants under the big trees in the shadow also adding the highlight on the roofs of the huts it will also create the sense of the texture of the tiles we will not overdo it only here and there I am also adding the dark pattern for suggesting the texture. Adding some highlights for the pillars. This is an overcast day, so we can assume this can be a monsoon and in monsoon because of rain it will be converted into a grassy land and for that I'm mixing my green and let's start painting the ground plane. I have started with a mid tone. This is the top plane so getting a little bit bounce light and that is the reason making it a little bit lighter. All right now making it more dark and painting the side planes getting less bounce lights and that is the reason this plane should be more dark than the top plane That's all right. Now this is the time to block in some small bushes and this is the shadow layer I'm painting right now. This will be pretty dark. So randomly I'm just placing some bushes. In the background also I'm doing the same thing Now let's block in some of the plants inside the shadow and you can see some of the leaves are getting bounce light so becoming a little bit lighter I'm also giving the hints of some branches over there Now let's add the mid tone on the top of the shadow. I'm re-establishing some of the shadow pattern for the bushes.
Now let's exaggerate the side blend by adding a little bit more dark tone to it. Alright, now let's go back to the mid-tone. So I have started adding the mid-tone to the bushes. And in this case also you can see I am not covering the entire bush and I am leaving some shadow pattern here and there. In this case also nothing is pre-planned. You have to add the strokes very spontaneously. That's fine and now it's time to add the highlight and you can see I am making my color more brighter and just a touch of here and there. If in a scene bright sun is there then this highlight will be towards the direction of the sun. But in this case there is no direct sunlight and that is the reason I am giving the hints of this highlight throughout the bushes. That means in this particular case, we have to remember not to create any cast shadow. Creating some branches for the background trees. Also creating some posts. Just the touch of the highlight and giving the hints of some flowers. That's fine. Now once again, let's start painting the ground plane. Over here, I am creating different different planes. Only one concept is going on in my mind. The plane facing towards the sky is getting the bounce light and the plane is coming downward is not getting enough light and that is the reason it is becoming dark. Now from here and there the soil will be visible. So I am giving the hints of the soil from here and there. And it is also creating a path that is naturally created by the human being or the animals. So I am giving the hints of that also. So this is basically the top layer what I created, getting the bounce light and now the same thing I am going to do for this also, side plants are the path. Because it is getting indirect light, it will be much more darker than the top plane. With this, I am also creating the foreground and in the foreground, I am planning to create a water body and that is the reason I am using the sky color in this area so that I can give the hints of the reflection from the sky. Now let's go back to the midground and create a grassy surface. In this case also, I am starting with the shadow pattern.
making the top planes a little bit brighter so that the top plane and side plane can have a little bit contrast. That's all right. Now let's create the mid tone for the mid ground. In this case also you can see, I am not covering the entire area with the mid-tone, but I am leaving some shadow pattern here and there. So this side also I am going to do the same thing. That's fine, now it's time for the lighter value. And this time it has to be a little bit brighter than the mid-tone. And over here also I am maintaining that, I am not covering the entire area. Just the touch of the brush here and there. Now let's come to the side plane and definitely it has to be a little bit darker. The concept is the same, it is getting the bounce light indirectly. Alright, now let's add some cracks at the edge of this water stream. So you can see I have made the side plane of the edge. Now let's redefine the top plane with a lighter value. Now making the cracks a little bit more prominent. That's fine. Now re-establishing the dark of the side plane. The goal is to create more contrast. Also I'm giving the suggestion of the soil. Now at the top of the soil, let's paint the mid-tone of the grasses. One thing to understand over here. At the background also I have used green, in the mid-ground also I have used green and in the foreground also I am using green. But all these greens are different. In the background the green I have used, I have used more blue into it. But in the foreground the green I am using, I have used more yellow into it. That means the green coming towards the foreground is much more chromatic than the background. And why this is necessary to do? because this will create a sense of depth in your landscape. That's alright, now let's paint the water stream. And the color I am using is the same color of the sky. For now, I am just giving the suggestion of the stream and later on I will come back to this area and will modify the shape a little bit. So over here at the edge of the stream, the color of the soil and because of the reflection of the sky, it will be converted into a kind of grey color and that is what I am doing over here. Now let's go back to some mid-ground bushes and I am doing the same thing, first I am painting the shadow and now I am painting the mid-tone of it. And you can see 
once again I am telling the same thing, I am not covering the entire area. And this is a time for some highlights. Now it's time for the foreground grasses and I'm starting with a shadow. So you can understand this will be the dark layer of the grass. That's fine. Now let's add some mid-tone of the grasses and you can see it is much more chromatic than the previous ground. Also adding some highlights and now in the foreground individual grasses will be visible. So I am starting painting individual grasses now. Gradually, I am coming towards the foreground and at the same time the size of the grasses is also increased. We have to remember this is still a mid-tone. Re-establishing the shadow at the bottom of the grasses. Now it's time to add some highlights and you can see how I am changing the direction also and emphasizing some of the grass blades. Giving the hints of individual grasses here and there. We don't have to be very precise but randomly you need to paint. Adding some highlight on the top of the previously painted layer. And now in this particular area, let's create another bush. I am using the same concept, first the dark, then mid-tone and then I am going to paint the highlight. Alright, now let's come to this side and I am starting with a dark layer of the grasses. In this case also you can see in the dark layer I am using different different colors just to make it a little bit harmonious. Now it's time for the mid-tone. Now the color I am using it is having the maximum chrominance in the green. At the same time, I am adding the suggestion of the highlights also. That's alright. Now it's time to paint the water stream. Previously, I added some detailing on it, but I wanted to make it much more cleaner and that is the reason I am painting over it. At the same time, I need to add the reflection of the distant trees and in this case also you can notice I have added more blue into it. That's fine. Now let's add a foreground tree. 
So first of all, I am placing the stem of the tree and also adding some branches. That's fine. Now let's add the leaves. The concept will remain the same. First of all, I'm painting the dark tone of the leaves. That means I'm blocking the leaves of the tree and also a small bush under the tree. In this stage only, let's add some branches. Now let's add some hints of the individual leaves. After painting the mid-tone over the dark tone, these leaves will still be visible. Spontaneously I need to paint. It should not be very precise otherwise it will not look naturalistic. In my final painting I am going to leave some of these dark leaves like this only. Now once again, let's add some branches. That's alright, now this is the time for the mid-tone. And you can see how spontaneously I am painting the leaves. Not thinking too much about the placement of it. The only thing I am maintaining is that I am not blocking the negative spaces. In this particular landscape, for most of the greens, I have used Viridian and Cad Yellow Medium. For the distant trees, I have added Ultramarine Blue into it. And for foreground trees, I have added more Cad Yellow Medium to it. Now it's time for the highlight. And in this case, you can see, I am trying to give the impression of small, small leaves. In this case, I have added a little bit Cad Yellow Light into it. Because it is an overcast day, I am not giving any suggestion of the sunlight. Now let's add more branches which will appear much more lighter because of the dark background. Alright, now let's give the hints of the texture in the tree trunk. And over here I am starting with a mid-tone. As you can see, dark tone I already applied previously. And now let's add some highlights. Adding more branches, another tree. Here you can notice that against dark background, I am drawing lighter branches. Against the lighter background, I am drawing dark branches so that it is properly visible. Now, adding the mid tone to the grass area. 
Here I am adding the hints of some individual leaves and here also I am using a mid tone. You can see how I am using color variation in this area. Now again this is the time to add some grasses. And at a distance I have started making the tiny grasses and gradually how it will come to the foreground I will increase the size gradually. So these grasses are also in mid-tone. You can see very quickly I am giving the suggestion of the grasses. Though I am maintaining a particular direction, then also I am drawing the grasses very randomly. Adding some highlights for the leaves. Alright, now over here you can see I am painting all the negative areas with a very dark color and this will create a sense of depth. Now let's set the highlights for some of the grass blades. For this particular highlight I have added Cadiolo Light and Titanium White. That's fine. Now we are at the final stage of the painting and over here I am blocking some of the human figure and definitely I need to paint it very tiny because the figures are at a distance. You can see I am not giving any detailing to it and I am just doing the blocking of the figures. Let's create another figure over here. Just the touch of tiny bits of colors. And we are almost done. That's all. So here is the painting. An overcast day. The color palette and the materials I have used today, I will give the details in the description, you can check it out. Hope you enjoyed the session and you can subscribe the channel for the future videos. Thank you very much for watching.